What we are going to do today is we are going to correct the exercises for chapter one. Do you want to ask anything before we start here? Any questions you want to ask before we start? Okay, let's just answer some of the questions. You're going to mark your own paper, unlike with the dictations where I have you exchange papers. You will mark your own work, get out a red pen. You need a red pen. If you really don't have a red pen, then use a different color writing instrument than you did to do the exercises. If you wrote it by hand, uh, then you can use a pencil or something. But if it's by computer, I suppose a blue pen will show up too. But in the future, have a red pen ready. So we're going to go through them. The first ones are pretty easy, so not a problem. We'll just go around the room. And our instructions are, Studying a new subject often involves learning a large number of technical terms. Technical terms. Please put that in your notes. Now what is special about it? Where do we have that whistling coming from? Is technical terms a compound noun? No, it's not because technical is what? It's an adjective. However, a lot of adjectives that end with AL and IC, they are stressed like compounds when you put them with a noun. I think it's because the noun is often kind of empty. Or it's because it is contrastive. For example, political as compared to economic. Political and economic. So we don't say technical terms. It sounds excited and weird. It's technical terms. All right, put that in your notes because a lot of AL and IC adjectives behave like this. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. And I, don't, I haven't seen this written about anywhere, actually. Phonetics is particularly challenging in this respect because we have a lot of technical terms to learn. Read over the definitions of the terms in this chapter before completing the exercises below. Say each of the words and listen to the sounds. Be careful not to be confused by spellings. You are better at this probably than native speakers. Native speakers are extremely influenced by spelling. You would be extremely influenced both by Chinese characters and by Zhuyin Fu Hao. Um, I will give you an example. This is going to take more time like we always do in this class. How do you say this sound? And how do you say this sound? Yen. I thought this was an. Why is this yen? Is it yan? Yan duema? No, it's not yan. Chan mian. Sounds like from here, from somewhere in North China. I knew an old guy who talked like that. But why do we use the same symbol here? It's not an, it's e. Why don't we write? It's like a 比较合理吧? Try reading it. Yeah. yeah, that's good. What's wrong with that? Now try reading this. Yeah, yeah that doesn't work very well. You sound better when you say this one. It sounds like more correct Chinese. This is when you were a child just learning to Fu how, did you notice this? You noticed it. Tell me about it, please. Uh, it just became very weird. But, yeah. But uh, as Tony goes by, I, uh, I come to adjust to it. You noticed it when you were about six years old. Yeah. Right. Sometimes I've met mistakes on my Chinese test about this kind of mistakes. Maybe you write something like this or something. It just yeah, maybe not this way, but you notice that an and yen, it's the same symbol, but they don't sound the same, right? And another thing that I noticed was uh, like bo shi. Why should not be bo wu o ku? Why should not be bo wu o ku? That's a really good question. There's an answer for that. Um, we're getting off on another topic, but what I'm saying is that 
once you get used to a writing system, it really affects how you, how you think. And it's very hard for you to think in a different way once you've accepted it. So if somebody would tell you to write it like this, you'd say, no, that's ridiculous, right? But you say it more correctly than you say this one. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that writing really affects the way we think. That's just one example. When we're little, we realize there's something wrong there. There is a good ex explanation for it. Can anybody, based on what you know about phonetics so far, can you offer a reason for why we do this? Why did they choose an with e, ian, ian? It's not a very good phonetic match. Why did they do it? Hmm? Place of articulation. Well, you're on the right track. Can you elaborate? Well, you're sort of getting on the right track. The thing is that E, remember when we were talking about T and two, right? Or true. It was true and T. Is that right? True and T. They said that your tongue is more back for which one? And more forward for T. E makes your tongue go more forward. Now for an, an, feel where your tongue is. An. Now say in. Compare where your tongue is for those two. An, yin, an, yin. Can you feel your tongue being a bit higher for yin? So it's pulling your tongue up. And when you pull your tongue up, remember our vowel space for English, we have e, i, e, a, right? And you're this an is not this a, but it's a little bit close. It's probably right around here somewhere. So when you pull it up towards e, it gets closer to the s space, right? So in fact, they're the same phonemes, but the e is changing the vowel a bit. This is a bit off topic, but I just want to say there's a lot of things about our writing system that start to change the way our brain works. There's another one, and this one still bothers me. Um, how do you write Kaohsiung de Xiong? Well, first of all, let's start with this. This is yu, right? Then we have yun, yun the yun, and then we have and let's get rid of this. Let's make it a second tone to make it easier. Xiong, right? All right. Compare these yu, yu, yun, xun. I know. Xiong. This is This is Yu. Xun. How do you say this? Xun. Think about that. Think about that. Where? I didn't see Yu. I didn't see O. That is Yu. Right? One Yu. 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 Xu. Xun. You never thought about that, did you? Yeah. Uh, I remember I asked my mom about this, and she just told me to remember that Xu Yong Xiong. Right. You're just told to accept it. Is that right? Just learn it and stop asking such ridiculous questions. Is that right? OK. What I'm saying is there's a lot of weird things. This one, I think, is weird because in, you now know in pinyin, how do we write this? This one is yu. This is yun. And this one is Tianzama. Pinyin Zamasia. It's not U, it's what? E O. So that tells you Xiong, right? Kinsega. So anyway, writing systems will affect how we think. Um, let's see, what were we starting with? What I originally started out saying was you're probably going to be more flexible about English. You're going to be a bit less influenced by the spelling than a native speaker. Because this stuff, you know, once we've got it in our head, like, this is a ridiculous way to write. This is Thai, right? So tight should be written like this, right? This is Thai. Tight should be written like this. But we don't write it like this. We write it like this. 
And this is a pretty ridiculous way to spell tight if this is Thai. So what I'm saying is that native speakers are going to be highly, highly influenced by spelling. We get used to this, and so if we want somebody to pronounce a new word we don't know, and it starts with, for example, um, let's find something, dite. There's no word dite in English. They'll say, well, just pronounce it like this. Because we're so used to this. Do you see what I'm saying? What I'm saying is that writing forms how we think. It's, it's very, very deeply impressed in our minds. And originally what I was saying is that because you learn KK from the beginning, most of you, you have, a, you have more flexibility about spelling. You will be less influenced by spelling than native speakers because in my experience, I've also taught this to native speakers. They get totally led astray by spelling, totally. But Taiwan students, because you know KK, usually you are less influenced by spelling. Do you understand what I'm saying? Karima, Chinchu. So I'm just reacting to the sentence that says, be careful not to be confused by spellings. What I'm saying is, you are much less likely to be confused by spellings than native speakers. Native speakers are very, very susceptible to being confused by spellings. Using a mirror may be helpful. And as I said, if you have like a makeup mirror, it's really helpful when you're learning places of articulation. All right, we're just going to start with number one. Go around the room. Circle the words that begin with a bilabial consonant. Each person takes one whole item. Go ahead. Met. Bet. Pet. Good. Two. Circle the words that begin. That's fine. We're done. Circle the words that begin with a velar consonant. Not starts with a velar consonant. All this time I was saying about how you're not influenced by the spelling in Taiwan so much, you were influenced by the spelling, <laughs> right? Is that right? You saw the K. So it still happens, but it happens even more with native speakers. That's my experience. So let's try again. Got anything else? Don't be too influenced by spelling. The other way, you might, you might miss some. Cot, because it starts with a K sound, right? K sound. So there you're behaving like a native speaker. Next. Three, circle the words that begin with a labiodental consonant. Fat. Fat. Fat and vat. Do you all remember what a vat is? Ikang dong shi shang ikang ni. ikang zu you zi lei de. That's a vat. A vat of lard, a vat of rice. And four, uh, we want an alveolar consonant. All of them, please read them. Not Z. No. Your consonants are fine, your vowel is not. Yes. Everyone, this is a short I. All of them are a short I. Every, uh, I. Everyone, I. I. Zip. Zip. OK, try the rest, Wendy. Beautiful. All the rest were perfect. That's good. OK, number five. Uh, here we want a dental consonant. And we're going to call them not dental consonants, but interdental. Yeah, remember always to call them interdental. We need dental for Mandarin. Because Mandarin, the dutanala consonants are dental, but they're not interdental. That's why we need to stick with interdental for English. OK? And how do we pronounce them? The first one is voiceless. Phi is that way. Thy is yours. Everybody, thy. 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 Good. Number six, we want a palatoalveolar. Shy, anything else? Nope, that is it. Very good. Let's come back to the front here. Um, we want a fricative. Words that end with a fricative. Breathe, right. OK, and the other two are nasals, so they are not fricatives. And number eight, sorry. Oh, you're not done yet. Sorry, that's two lines. OK, very good. So uh, we have here rave. Rave means to get really excited over something to the point of being a bit crazy. And rose, that's a Z sound. Rough, we we're just talking about the funny GH spelling in English. But it goes back to a Germanic sound of kh. It used to be kh, but now it's disappeared completely from English. Number eight, uh, words that end with a nasal? Ray, ray, Very good. OK, don't be fooled by the B. It is silent. Number nine, words that end with a stop? Ray, ray, 
Very good. Okay. Lip, lit, crab, dog, hide, back. Number 10. And words that begin with a lateral. How do we say that word? Lull. 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 Uh huh. There's a very fun recording in one of the web pages if you haven't listened to it yet. Those are two different L's. This is a bit off topic, but the word lull made me think of it. Those are two different kinds of L's. One before a vowel is called what kind of L? Clear L, if you don't have it in your notes. An L that occurs before a vowel is called a clear L. An L that occurs after a vowel is a velarized L. 就是舌根化 in Chinese. And we call that a dark L. And so they have very different sounds. So look at me and listen. Listen like love. Luscious, l. It's just like in Chinese. But after a vowel, bill, ball, dull, ul. Can you hear that? It's, it's velar. It's way back in, in my mouth. Ul, ul. Everybody try. Dull. Dull. You don't even have to put your tongue tip on your alveolar ridge for a dark L. Dull. Dull. For L after a vowel. That's called a dark L. It's also called a velarized L. We're going to learn about it later. But since the word came up in the exercises, I just wanted to share this with you now. Those L's are so different. And that's another example of where the writing system influences us native speakers a lot. Before I studied phonetics, I did not know those were two different L's. I would have totally denied it. I would have said, no, that's ridiculous. An L is an L. But velarized L. Listen to the two of them and see if you can hear the difference. I'm going to play lull forwards, and then I'm going to play it backwards. We recorded it and then reversed the recording so you're going to hear it backwards. Do you understand what we're doing? So the end of lull will come at the beginning. Now, part of the reason it sounds so strange is because of the intonation. In the guanxi, when we say a word in isolation, what does it sound like? What kind of pitch do we have, or what kind of an intonation do we have? Lull. What's my intonation? Is it flat? Going up? No? It's falling, that, is that right? So, lull. Lull is going down. Now, one reason why this recording is going to sound funny is because it's going to go up. It makes the intonation go up because it's going backwards. Oh, here's the original. Low. Here it is backwards. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Low. That's low backwards. That's how different those two L's are, just so you know. And you will be able to do this when we start using Prot. Prot. It is software like Wasp, only it can do many more things you'll be able to reverse recordings like this. And you can learn how to talk backwards. You can learn how to talk backwards, but it's very difficult. In fact, that will be an assignment. One day I will give you an assignment to record something forwards, then learn how to say it backwards and record that. So when you play that backwards, the backwards recording backwards, then it's forwards. And it'll sound like something like, whoa. <laughs> it'll sound like that. Really weird because we don't know how to control our voice going backwards very well. Some people can, though. Zhao Yuanren could do it. He could speak backwards. Zhao Yuanren. He's the linguist I admire most in the entire history of man. Zhao <laughs> Yuanren. He could do that. All right. So we have, uh, we're on laterals. That's what brought me to this topic. Lull, number 11. Uh, words that begin with an approximant. In other words, all four. Good. Number 12 up front. Words that end with an affricate. Oh, I'm sorry, in the back, I missed you. Much edge. Much edge, those are the only two, that's right. Okay, now we come to the front, number 13. Um, words in which the consonant in the middle is voiced. Okay, your answers are right, let's correct the pronunciation. First of all, it's not ah, it's a uh, mother. Not mother, it's mother. mother. And that's... Very, very, very common in Taiwan English. So another, brother, mother. Those are ah, in guys, uh. Another, mother, brother. Everybody, another. another. Mother. mother. Brother. brother. 
All right, that's the first one. The second one, robber. Can you say it again? Robber. Make sure the I is long. Robber. robber. It's not rubber. And then it'll sound like Xiang Pi, okay? Robber. The third one in American English, most people say leisure. leisure. Please check the pronunciation of every word you don't know. Put that in your notes. Every word you don't know, check the pronunciation. If you're just guessing, sometimes you'll get it right, but you will often lose to my gel. Usually, we'll catch you right away. Just look it up once. You'll probably remember it. In American English, usually it's leisure. Leisure time. Everyone, leisure. leisure. In British, it's usually leisure. 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 Right. Some Americans say leisure as well. All right. And then we have, what else? The next one? Stomach. Stomach, right? Remember not to aspirate the T. What's a stomach? You didn't, but remember. It's not stomach, it's stomach. Everyone's stomach. Stomach. And the last one? Raisin. That was perfect. Okay. Let's go on. 14. Words that contain a high vowel. Okay. Suit, meat. And the other ones don't count. Good. 15. Words with a low vowel. We have, how do we say that word, W-A-D? You didn't check it. Ha <laughs> ha. Actually, sometimes the shortest words are the most surprising, are the trickiest. It's a wad. A wad of bills. Did you know ilo in English before? Now you know. A wad of bills. <laughs> You're just looking at me. All right. A wad of bills. So wad is still a low vowel, even though you had the wrong one in mind. What else? Lad. Lad. Okay, good. And 16, uh, ones that contain a friend vowel. Okay, cat, kit. How about gate? Is that a friend vowel? We haven't learned it. This one was tricky because they didn't teach us A. But A, E, those are both friend vowels. So this is a friend vowel, but it's a diphthong. It's a diphthong. So gate is also front. Let's go on. 17. Back vowel. Coop. What else? Cop. Not cop. Cop sounds like fades. Cop. And? Yeah. It's not good. It's good. That was good. <laughs> All right. So A and E are uh, both front. Let's try those three. Everyone, coop. Coop. Cop. Cop. Good. Good. Now I'm going to tell you something else that's also new and uh, going to take a little time, but the stuff I tell you is all useful and I tell it for a reason because it will help us later. If you listen to my pronunciation of good, does that sound like a pure monophthong to you? Doesn't, does it? Ugh. Good. If I say, for example, food, does that sound pure to you? That sounds pretty pure, doesn't it? How about feet? That sounds pretty pure, doesn't it? But good doesn't sound pure. And how about fit? It doesn't fit me. Fit. That's i. Fit. Is that a pure vowel? No. What is going on here? We have learned all these vowels as monophthongs, have we not? Remember that phonetics really was developed in England. Phonetics, the phonetics that we're learning was developed in England. And it applies very well to British English. But it does not apply. Many of the things going on here do not take changes in American English into account. One of them is that short vowels in American. This is this is this is 大道理一个原则。英式美式所有的短母音，所谓的短母音， all of them are diphthongs. All of them are diphthongs. They are all followed by a short schwa sound. Uh. And in the case of ah, ho mian ta bi jiao jie jin ah. That's why I keep telling you to use the Taiwanese o ah to get it right. The other ones are followed by a little schwa. That's another thing they don't tell you in English class. So, food, good. Do you, can you hear the schwa? Good. Uh. My tongue is going towards, its target is a schwa. Good. Now, 
I knew this anyway, but I really, really had it brought home to me when I was trying to learn British English vowels. And my teacher would just laugh at me and tell me it was American because I was putting a schwa after all my short vowels. In British, it should be something like good, good, good. Now, does that sound more pure to you? Good, good. That's more British. I won't say totally British. I'm not that Belgian, but good. But American is good, good, good. So it's a tabia mandada. So when you hear short vowels pronounced by someone like me from the States or anywhere in North America, you're going to hear that little schwa after all of the short vowels. Even very short vowels, i is a very short short vowel. But we still have that little i after it. Bit, bet, bet. But bet, I bet, I bet. I bet it still has a little bit of a schwa at the end. So put that in your notes. In American English, we call this little tail an off glide. An off glide. Off glide is 双母音其的中之间的双母音里面的比较不显著的那个母音比较不重要的那个母音比较没有那么的 so, in I-A-L-O, which one is the off glide? The first or the second element? The second one is the off glide. In Chinese as well. In this one, how about you? Is the yi more important or is the u more important? The U is more important, so this, we call it an on glide. So, glide is a little If it's at the beginning, we call it an on glide. If it's, the, if it's at the end, we call it an off glide. So, that makes it easier to say, restate what I just told you about short vowels in American English. All short vowels in American English have a bit of an off glide, usually a schwa. Okay? Put it in your notes. This is important. The textbook doesn't tell you this. Okay? And we're going to go on in the exercises. And I'm going to switch to my old textbook because that's where I wrote my answers. Okay, go ahead. Number 18. Okay, rounded vowel. We want um, words that contain a rounded vowel. It's only who. How about us? Is that rounded? And how about but? It's the same vowel. Native speakers will easily be tricked by that because of the writing system. U looks like it should be, I mean, the letter U looks like it should be rounded, but it's only who that's rounded here, uh, and it's not written with a U. Okay, very good. Now, part B, number one. So, for the first sound in skin flint, it's next. Just write down, uh, we already did it, S here, sorry, K. Oh, up here? Any, go. Voiceless. It's voiceless. Wheeler. Central. Is it oral? How should we say it? Or, everyone, or. Oral. Try it again. That's better. Okay, what can we leave out? What did you put parentheses around? That's right, same as for S. Good. All right, next. N? Mm? It's voiced. Alveolar. Central. Nasal. And nasal, that's right. We could call it stop, but we're not going to call it a stop because it's not a stop. They want stop, but get in the habit of never mind, uh, n not using stop for nasals. Good. And, for f and which ones could you omit? Central, we don't need. Good. F. Next. Mm hmm. Good, good, or, oral, uh-huh, fricative, very good. Can we leave anything out? Central and oral again, right? Okay, L next, oh, mm -hmm. right, lateral, right. This is the one where we need to say it, it's lateral, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, 
And did you say central the first time or lateral? I didn't actually hear you very well. Right, it was OK. Yeah, all right, let's go on to t. OK, so uh, voiceless. Voiceless, not voiceless, voiceless. Voiceless. Good. Uh, right. Mm. Right. Okay. Yep. A plosive, you can call it a plosive. Let's just call it a stop. Let's just call it a stop. OK, vocal organs in figure 1.14. Let's just do that quickly because I think you're pretty good at this already. Good. So after Stanley? Uh, mm-hmm. Two. Good. Good. Just keep going fast. Hard palate, not palate. Palate. Pa palate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Epiglottis. Good. Good. Number nine. Number nine. No, I think that's, yeah. They're not really pointing at the teeth. It's not that clear, but they're not pointing at the teeth. We don't have anything for the lower teeth. What is it? Tongue tip, yeah, next. Ten? Yeah, blade of the tongue. Next. Front. Keep going. Center and back. All right, so we have one left. Fourteen. Right, the tongue root. Okay, we finished that. Part B. So, uh, figure 1.15a through g illustrates all the places for articulatory gestures that we've dis discussed so far, except for retroflex sounds, which will be illustrated in chapter 7. In the spaces provided below, one, state the place of articulation, two, the manner of articulation of each sound, and three, give an example of an English word beginning with the sound illustrated. Okay, so A should be place of articulation is? Mm-hmm. Stop. Well, those aren't examples. Those are just, they, they said a word, an example of an English word. Treat, was it? Or tree? Can you spell it? I didn't hear it clearly. Trick. Uh, that's why I had trouble. Originally, I thought you said this because of your vowel. You went home with tempo ching chu, treat. But you actually said trick, right? And then I thought maybe it was tree. But what you really said is this, which is this vowel. Trick. Everyone, trick. And these two go together at Halloween, which is coming up. It's almost Halloween. Trick or treat, everyone? It's good practice for the vowels. I and E, everyone. Trick or treat. The rest of it is money or eats. Trick or treat, money or eats. If you want to go around and collect some candy, that's very bad for you. All right, so trick, treat. Um, the other thing that was funny is when you said treat, treak, yo wei tong shue jing jing da si, jiao treak. Do you know him? Yeah. So I thought treak means some words you don't Okay. So watch your vowels. You have to watch all your sounds, but really watch your vowels. Okay. B next. Right. Frig don't say frigative. Nega si se buniang gada. And I think the reason people say that is because. They probably taught you not to aspirate syllables that start with an unvoiced stop that's not uh, stressed. Is that right? You don't know what I'm talking about. I think you just learned from your teacher. We don't say frigative. T can become d, but k cannot become g. It sounds very foreign. So, fricative. Once more? That's better. Okay? Examples. Okay, thigh is fine. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. We're still on. We're letter C now? Letter B. B, that's right. That's right. I, I jumped ahead. So, letter B, and your example again is? Five. five. And this time I heard five. 
I didn't hear the v, and part of it is the room is large. It's not easy to hear over here. And I thought, why are you using a Shakespearean word? <laughs> Phi, okay. Phi v is a good example. Let's go on C, and I hope I don't get mixed up again. Let's go on C. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. D? Good. Good. Stop in America. I mean, at least the way I speak. Stop. Not stop. Stop. Yeah. Louder? Ten. Ten. Okay. E? Al. It's not all. It's Al. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's look at that picture for letter E. Um, what they're trying to show you here is it's, it's post-alveolar. What they mean here is palato-alveolar. It's hard to get used to these drawings. I have my problems with them. What they want to show you is palato-alveolar, or you can call it post-alveolar. Okay? In that case, fricative is still correct, but give me an example. For, for palato-alveolar? She. She. Yeah. She is a palatoalveolar or gendarme. <laughs> this is a fa wen zi. Yin wen zhe kai tou de zi bing bu duo. We have genre. Wen xue li mian you genre. Ke shi, ke shi na ge zhe kai tou de zi zai yin wen li mian fei chang shao dou shi wai lai yu. All right, so that was supposed to be palatoalveolar. Get used to how they do these drawings and what they are trying to depict. Because um, at the beginning it's confusing, but you'll get used to their style. And then F. F, we're back in front. Right? It's, pal it's just palatal, that's right. And then? Is it a fricative? Do we have any palatal fricatives in English? What do we have? Of all of the stuff we've learned so far, memorizing places and manners of articulation, this one is the easiest. As soon as we get to palatal, we've only got one. And it's not a fricative. It's an approximant. In Chinese, it's called? in in. It's very kou the way they say it. It's an approximant. Everybody, please remember that. You're going to need it for the test on Monday. So approximant. Um, is it possible to have a palatal fricative? We do, actually. I'm jumping ahead again. But this is so just because the subject came up, and so it'll be easier for you when we get to it. For example, in the word pure, after P, before, between the P and the U sound, what do we have? We have a Y sound, right? And the P is voiceless. So we say pure. And I'll get the microphone so you can hear it better. Pure. Listen. Pure. Do you hear something? Hear some friction there? Do you hear some friction there? Pure. It's not a fricative like tss or shh, where you're really pretty much touching something. But we do have turbulent air. Pure. Pure. Yeah. Should it be voiced or voiceless? Should be voiced, but because P is voiceless, the Y is assimilated as to what? Phonation. They are the phonation types. This is important. I'm not going to test you on it this time, but I might in the future. In the textbook, it says they get close, two articulatory organs get close, but not so close that they produce friction. Is that right? This is how ding e. Fricatives are two articulatory organs getting so close, they're not usually completely touching. They're not touching like a stop. They get so close that when the air comes through, it produces a turbulence and friction. Is that right? 
And it says that approximants are also close, but not so close that they produce friction, like a fricative. Is that right? How? They didn't tell you one of the tan quan. And that is, if an approximant is voiceless, then we will hear turbulence. This is the approximant. When it is voiced, we don't hear turbulence. But if it's voiceless, and normally it's, it should not be voiceless in theory. It's a phoneme, it's a voice. But if there's a in that case, we have a voiceless approximate, and we will hear friction. Pure. Pure. Everybody try it. See if you get it. Uh-huh. That's right. So that was a long story about um, friction and approximants and fricatives. OK? We're going to continue. Next. Mm -hmm. Good. Coin, right. Stop. I'm just trying to get you to learn my dialect. All right, stop. Everyone, stop. Stop, mm -hmm. stop is British, and swap could be East Coast, but Midwestern is stop. All right. All right, now we're going to have to draw. And let's do it very quickly. Sorry to take class time on this, but let's just quickly put the things on the board. Um, whose turn? OK, so you have the first one. Second, third, and fourth, and fifth, one more, fifth. Can you put them on the board really quickly? That's why I wanted you to practice those drawings. So you get the last one, the third one, the second one, and you're just redrawing the first one. Yeah. Um, we want to illustrate the target for the gesture of the vocal organs for the first consonants in each of the following words. So for Matt, we've got the lips together and we've got voicing. And the soft palate is lowered. For the second one, day, we've got the tip of the tongue touching the alveolar ridge. We've got the, the velum raised. The velic closure here is raised. It's, it's closed. And then we've got voicing, correct. For cat, we've got no voicing, which is correct. But what happened here? Make a k sound, everybody. Do you feel something touching? In order to be a stop, they have to touch. So this would be wrong on the test. Let's fix it. Just so it's functionally correct. If it's not artistic, it doesn't matter too much. All right, now do you see why I told you to practice those drawings? Because when I first started doing this, I would get up at the board and kind of be embarrassed because I hadn't practiced. But I practiced, now I can do it. The only way that you will be able to not be embarrassed is by practicing. You've already done 12 of them at least. Maybe you did more that you threw away that you didn't give me. Please keep practicing this, because this is not the only time you're going to need it. You will need it much in the future. Everybody got that? Keep practice, practicing drawing this figure so you can uh, illustrate articulations. All right, think. We've got the th. It stuck out a little too much like that student I told you about. <laughs> this one, that one, the other one. You didn't tie dollar. I'm not making fun of it. I'm not making fun of it. I'm pointing it out. Think. Everybody think. Just about half a centimeter. But that's OK. And then the, the teeth actually do touch it. And then this is raised. It's not nasal. And it is voiceless. The rest is correct. But I think you can work a little bit more on, on practicing the drawing. And then we have nut. Tip of the tongue is raised to touch the alveolar ridge. This is lowered, not touching the pharyngeal wall, and it's voiced. We're OK. Uh, how about if we get through the exercises before break? The next part is much easier. OK, whose turn? Go ahead. For F, the first one, we've already, uh, it's an example. So it's voiced alveolar stop. Next one, father. Very good. Everybody work on that oi sound. It's not voiced. The o is much shorter. It's voiced. 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 Yeah, don't say voiced. Voiced. Next. All right, singing the, the ng is voiced. And yep, good. Etching the ch. Voiceless. It's what? 
palatal alveolar, and it's an affricate, yeah. And next, B is voiced. Bilabial, stop, good. And next one. Everybody gets that wrong every year, every single year. Do you know this word? What happens when you don't know a word? What should you do? Check the dictionary. Tongsu, please do not guess, especially if it's in a phonetics exercise. Your male voicing, the wind he. All right, do you know this word now? What does it mean? Hmm? Outer space in the ether. In Chinese, you call it? Yeah, yi tai. It's called yi tai. Ether is also something used uh, to put people to sleep when they're getting surgery. It's an anesthesia. But that's what they used to use to, for anesthesia in, sur in surgery. It's ether. Everyone, ether. ether. We do have the word either. Either or, the either. It's Haisha voiced. All right, so it's voiceless and interdental. Fricative. All right, tongs, everybody, please. You had time to do it at home. It's not like I just put you on the spot in class. Next one, pleasure. Mm -hmm. Very good, voice, palato, alveolar, fricative. Next, hopper. Not voiceless, voiceless. I'm being really picky, sorry. Voiceless, bilabial, stop. Next, selling. Lateral, voiced alveolar, lateral, lateral approximate, okay. Next one, sunny. Mm. Voiced alveolar nasal, good. Lodger. Huh? Yeah, everybody watch that. Now, in theory, it shouldn't make a difference, but we just need to distinguish between English, j and ch, and Chinese, ji qi xi, and Polish, etc. Alveolo palatal is Zhongwen, yong de. Zhongwen, bo lan wen, yong de. Palatal alveolar is what we're using for English. So it's palatal alveolar. Africate, yeah, and it's voiced, right. And lodger, if I ask somebody out of the blue, if I say, what's the meaning of lodger? What do you think it means? What does lodger mean? What will you think without context, without seeing how it's written? That's right. And you're still saying it, actually. So this is another thing. How I constantly get sidetracked, but that's because of 20-some years of experience. These are two different words. That's one reason why you should not say larger for larger. Everybody, larger. 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 Lodger. Lodger. Sounds like this one for you, doesn't it? You need to change it. Well, you say, well, it's British. But if you're speaking British, you're consistent. This is lodger. This is lodger. Listen, my British is not good, but it's close enough. Lodger. 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 They will distinguish it clearly. So if you're speaking American and you suddenly say lodger, this is what we hear. OK? R's are important. If you're speaking American, put the R's in. Okay, let's continue. And next, the one that does not belong. Okay. Mean, very good. Let's say the other ones. Everybody, pen. Yes. Said. Said. Death. Death. Mess. Mess. And mean. mean. Good. Next, two. And the answer is what? Haha. -ha. See, that's the whole point. That's what I keep saying. Shall I repeat it one more time? No, that's not what I want to repeat. What do I want to remind you of? Check. Check. Where should you go to check? There are many wonderful places to check online now. I always used to say Miriam Webster, and I still say it. For me, I think. It's the most convenient. Just go to Merriam-Webster online. Listen to the audio file. But there's also the Oxford Advance. There's the Macmillan. And what were the other ones? I gave you a bunch of them. There are so many of them that are really, really good.
but with a Fang Bian Qi Jian, if it's American, just go to Merriam-Webster. Okay, if you want British as well, then go to Oxford, they give you both. Mm, okay, so the, uh, how do we say these words? Everybody, meat, meat. steak, steak. Weak. weak, theme, theme. Green. green. You got the right word, but it's steak, A. Good, number three, Jamie. The answer is mast. Let's read the other ones, and these are good practice words for Taiwanese. Sane. Sane. Yeah, don't say sen. It's not sen. Sane. Sane. Paid. Paid. Eight. Eight. Lace. Lace. Mast. mast. What's a mast? Yeah, 就是船上面的那个杆子,那个叫 mast. 不是帆本身. Let's go on to four. Tun, and we practice that. Everybody, tun. tun. Toast. 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 Both. both. A lot of you say both, and it's wrong. It should be both. All of these are O except tun. Uh, both. both. Note. Note. Toes. Toes. Yeah, don't say toast. Uh, we don't have that word. And five. Are you sure? Gru, gru is the one you picked? Is that correct? Should be? Okay, let's, let's listen. Hoot, good, moon, gru, suit. Which one is different? Good, yeah. All right, six. Mm -hmm. Dud, the other ones. Dud, died, mine, I, guy. Let's do it, dud. dud. Died. Mine. Mine. I. I. Guy. Guy. All right, you're taking a lot for granted. You need to start checking every single teeny tiny word to make sure. Because a lot of them you are just guessing, and you're not guessing right a lot of the time. All right, so um, how many distinct sounds in each of the following words? One. Three. L F. Good. Two. B. E. G. D. How many? Four. All right, next. G, R, F, F, C. Six. Next. Two? How do you count? How do you count two? Hmm? Three, right? F, ish. Which one were you leaving out? How were you counting? Hmm? Oh, F, ish. Ah, but we need to count the vowels. So, F, ish. Next. Next, shy way. Ish, uh, Five is correct. Next. F, ish, t. This is harder than it looks, isn't it? I think you need, you need to be more aware, more careful, and check more. Okay, some of you are just taking things for granted, especially if you've just finished five. F, ish, why do we have five for number five and four for number six? Because us, and why do we have us? Because sh is a sibilant, siin, and siin, by the way, is a kouzi bian, yiga man tiao si li de si. Kouzi li, kouzi bian, yiga man tiao si li de si. Fishes, and fished. 它也是个四音,可是这是ed, not ed, 它就是加一个特的音. All right, seven? How many? B, A, T, N, N. How many? Not five. Five. Everyone, five. five. All right, now how did you count? 你刚刚是怎么算的? B, A, T, N. You put ing together. Okay, remember to keep the vowel and the nasal separate. That's easy to do, actually, I mean, to put them together, but watch out. Okay, we're done here. Oh, no, Alex. Eight. Mm-hmm. Kuh-ik. Wow, gosh, I'm surprised. Because you're a really good class. You just need to be more careful. All right. The is good, three. Next. Mm -hmm. Is ik good. 
11. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Each vowel is counted separately, even if it's repeated. Okay? And uh, we're on 11. Na-a-n-ak, uh, yeah? 12. Ak s i s. Did you all get that one right? Because X looks like it might be one sound, but X is two sounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, not one question, a question. Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. I is a diphthong. You're going to have to define it ahead of time. Diphthong is one in has a in. You have to pick one. All right, mail your data All right, and then for figure 1.117. Um, okay, did you all make your own waveforms? Okay, I just want to make sure that you did it. And let's skip letter I for now, and then how about for K? I think K is the hardest part of the whole exercise. Do you agree? Yeah. Students have told me that other years. It is really hard at this point because in the early editions, they would never ask you a question like this in the first chapter. That's a, that's a question for chapter 8. This is Sui Di Ba Ge Da Zang Da Wen Ti. Whose turn? Whose turn? All right. So for bite, the first foreman is similar to, uh, they, they want you to compare. Let's read the whole thing because it, it's a very precise instruction they're giving here, very precise instructions. Recall the pitch of the first formant, creaky voice, and the second formant, whispering or whistling, in the vowels in the words heed, hid, head, had, hod, hod, hood, hood. Compare their formants to those in the first parts of the vowels in the following words. So for bite, you only take what into consideration? The ah part. But for remember for bite, we don't write it like this, do we? Mail down is that right? So we write it like this. And as I mentioned in a previous class, that's because Shamu in the Mian the Nisha Ge Bid Mu in Mayo Dang Damu in Chu Xian. Okay? Tapu e Damu in the Xing Shi Chu Xian. So this this ah uh, and I is different from this ah. Uh, and they really want to find out. I mean the nigga ah dot is be jiao jie jin shen me yang de mu yin. So it's the yong formant. It's the te shi zi ge mu yin de yi bu fen. First formant is the nigga hou long zi bian de nigga creaky voice de nigga. So what is your answer? Which word did you choose? You picked heed? Okay. This question is truly difficult, but I'm going to make a first foreman for you in bite and compare it to some of the words. So, I bite, I ah uh, bite, ah, uh, and let's listen to the foremans. E, uh, now, which one sounds most like bite, bite? Right? Hard bite. I. Right? You guys say H O D hard. Uh huh. First formant. And how about the second formant? What did you pick for that? Had. H A D. Sorry? H A D? H A D. All right, we said three times and it's right. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's H A D. We're not going to demonstrate you got it right. Next one. Next one is bait. We just had bite, now it's bait. Mm -hmm. You used hood for the first one? All right, let's try it. For bait, and we want a first format. Let's compare. Which one sounds more like? Everybody quiet? You're going to have to listen to this really funny sound. Okay? Is it more like? Yeah. 
Doesn't it sound most like eh? It should be head. Okay? And then how about the second format? Hid? All right, for second format, let's listen to the whisper. It should be. Can you hear it? If you compare. It's the closest we can get. Did you have something else? What did you think it was? Jamie, what did you have? Head? H-E-A-D or H-A-D? H-E-A-D. That's the right answer. So don't look so weird. Okay, it's <laughs> correct. Okay, head and head. That's what I got. And I tried it many times. I, I'm pretty sure of this. Um, let's go on to boat next. Okay, so boat, we have all, and for first format, all. Now listen. Let's try just the last ones because they're the ones we're considering. So is it more? It's closest to hood. How can hood to If you had really trouble with this, a lot of trouble with this, please don't worry. This is truly hard. This is really second semester stuff. But it's okay. And this stuff is not going to hurt your grade. And for the second format, I also got hood. Okay? So if you tried, then that's good. Trying is good enough because this stuff is really very advanced. All right, what we have left is this exercise. And during the break, um, whose turn is it? I would like you to, we'll, we'll figure out how we're going to do it. We're going to put it on the board, okay, during the break time, okay. And while they're writing, just very briefly on part K, I think most of you found part, part K very difficult, right? As I told to the student who came to talk to me during break, this material belongs to chapter eight, second semester, chapter eight. And second semester, we start with six, seven. So it's like middle of second semester before we really learn this stuff. So if you had trouble with it, that's totally normal. I will not test you on this stuff. So we're going to look at the marking now of this waveform of Tom Saw Nine Wasps. And you should be familiar with this already because you already made your own waveforms earlier before we knew we were going to do this. And let's see what we have here. Okay, we have a closure here. There's nothing going on. A lot of your computers have a lot of noise. Mine has a little too. You'll see a jagged line here. That's computer noise or some other noise. Normally, if you have a really quiet system, nothing, nothing at all, no sound at all. And here we have a burst. This is correct. That's a burst. Drawn really beautifully. Boy, we got the right person here. Okay. We've got a burst here. And then we've got, what is this? Yeah, when you see these really long lines, you know it's got quite a high amplitude. So that is the vowel. And here we still have regular lines, but the amplitude is much lower. We have a nasal. So ah, uh, mm. you can just use your subjective hearing, your, your, your subjective reaction to what you hear. And it really is reflected on a waveform. Is that right? And then we have sa. This is the fricative. This is noise. 不规则,乱七八糟的,很多种频率同时出现。出现没有什么规律. That's the noise, the fricative. And here, we recognize this again. 它的那个间隔可能宽一点,可能窄一点,不一定。But we have the same pattern as we have here, so we know that this is the 
This is the vowel, saw. And then here, we've got an off glide, saw. Not really, and that's not, not really a W. It's saw, uh, uh. Okay? And then we have nine. We've got a nasal here. 有时候很规则,政府也不大,这样子. Then we have a vowel. 很规则,政府还蛮大的. Nine. And then again, nasal. We're already familiar with this pattern. It's very similar to this one. Regular, but with a much smaller amplitude. And then we get wasps. We get wu, wu here. We have a nine. And then probably nothing is stopped here. 它没有停,它没有中断. 不是 nine wasps. If it were, we would see just a straight line here. But the voicing did not get broken off. Nine wasps. Nine and then wu is starting here. There's not a complete closure. Um, let's not write closure here. It's not quite a closure. Wu. See if I have that written here. It's just an approximate. We don't have a closure here. Gumma male closure. Nine. Except for the nasal, we do have a closure. They call it a stop because there is a closure, but we're not going to call that closure. It's a continuant. So, mmm, closure, so we're not going to write closure. It is a type of closure, but we're not going to write it here. Approximate is wu. Wu. We're just starting off here. And then again, we have a very regular large vowel. And then was, we've got noise again. And then was, remember stop at stops? Stop at stops, right? Nothing happens there, but we've got air under pressure. Was, you can feel it in your tummy, can't you? Was, unless you're really sloppy and say was, which some people actually do. So if you're saying it carefully, was, pss, was, pss, zhongjian整个都断了, is that right? That's how stops work. Why? Keep mentioning stop at stops. So that's called the hold phase of, of a stop, and we're going to learn about that really soon. And then, was, pss, we've got the burst here. Was, the burst is here. This is the burst. Wasp. The burst is here. Okay. And there is a closure here. We should add that. Here is a closure. Okay, that's not a closure because we've got air coming out of the nose, basically. There is a closure between the tongue tip and the alveolar ridge, but we've still got air and sound coming out of the nose. But here, this is a total closure with no sound at all. It's a voiceless stop. So we really stop. That's a closure. And here's our burst. That's when we let the air out. And that's noise. Nigapugueza. Stop a wasp. And then, then we get lots of noise, a fricative. Bugueza, because it's voiceless. Okay? Do we have any questions about that? Let me just see if I missed anything here. I think it's okay. As we're going along, everything looked okay. Uh huh. Anybody have any comments? Yeah. Why, why is there a between Because P is a voiceless stop. And when we have a voiceless stop, you're going to learn in a tutorial soon. We have an approach. So if I'm going to make a P was, my lips have closed. And during that closure, they're just getting ready to close. That's the approach. That's called hold. Was, air is under pressure behind my lips. And then I let it out. Was, That's because it happens so fast. That's because it happens so fast. Because on both sides, we've got consonants. Lianxi sang a consonants. We have to do it fast. Wasps, wasps, hen kuai. That was a very good question because this makes it deceptively look like it's a long stop, right? That was a good question to ask. 
It is very short, but it's still there if you look. There's still a closure. It just happens fast. Well, ss, 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 ss. Okay? Yeah. Is there a closure between saw and knife? Between saw and knife. Tom saw. There is, it's not a closure. Tom saw, it's just a stop. It's just a stop. It's not a closure. So between saw and nine, he took, he, made, he paused. Tom saw nine, was, all right, call me, man. Why would we pause there? We don't have to. Tom saw nine, why, sorry. I can't even do it because it's not, Tom saw nine wasps, then we wouldn't have it. But why do we have that pause there? I've given you a reason before. That's right, saw and wasps are both content words. So they are both, both what? Stressed. In addition, what? Something very important about all of the words in this sentence, but especially these two in this case. How many syllables do they have? Each one has only one syllable. And when you have a stressed monosyllable after another stressed monosyllable, or before, whatever, you have them in sequence, then, what do you do? In English, we do not like to have two stresses close together. Tom saw nine wasps. All four words are stressed. We don't like that. So, what do we use to get around that? What trick do we use? Pause. Tom saw nine wasps. Because we have no unstressed syllables to fill in, the gaps between the stress syllables, we pause. Okay? That was a good question. This proves it actually. Okay? Alright. Somebody else? Oh, and then I have to have to uh, mention um, mention Stanley's correction. Thank you. Okay. Show guy go lie. Stanley Shenzai is He was just really, really tense up till now. Thank you very much for catching that. You should tell me those things, because that way I'll not make the same mistake in the future. So if, yeah, if you notice these things I'm doing wrong, please tell me. OK. Um, anything else you want to ask? This is really I think, to get through all of these. Even if you didn't understand everything in Part K, it's OK. Any other questions on the exercises? Pinyin. That's one thing we have not finished, is pinyin. Let's do it really, really quickly. OK, the test will include one, at least one item on pinyin. So make sure that you can write in pinyin. I will give you maybe Chinese, and then you transcribe it into pinyin with the correct tone markings. And I put up a link, I believe. But I will not bug you about that. But it's not a big deal. If you ju can just learn how to transcribe an opinion correctly, that's enough. I want you to tell me if there's any mistake. Let's read it very slowly. Go. <laughs> okay, I put a little hook on Q. You don't have to, but I prefer it. A little hook on Q. Any mistakes? Isn't that beautiful? It's really good. Next. Did anybody put a second tone on men? Did anybody put a second tone on men? Okay, we don't need it. This is Qingsheng, but actually in Taiwan Mandarin, you sometimes say ta men. Ta men bu zhi dao. Beijing hua shi bu hui you de. Tai zhi zhi Taiwan de guo yu shi hou shi yu er sheng, but zui hao shi xie Qingsheng. Qingsheng zhi zhi shi me dou bu xie, all right? Okay, so let's continue over here. What's okay, Xiao Hai? It looked like a period, a very big period. Okay, huh? Xiao Hai. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I A L O 
The tone mark is always over the left hand letter. Always. I A L O 永远是在左边的字母上 And I looked at another site, and it said another way to remember it is it's always above a. Uh, let's see, a and e. 然后有它就是另外教呃、uh, 另外教你。所以 a 跟 e 这两个字母上永远有调符。Plus 有的时候它是在 o 上面。That's the the rule I just read yesterday actually. But also what I what I usually remember is i a l o. It's always on the left. Okay, hi, yo. If you don't have a l o, where is the letter I? It's in the back. Because the I is representing a, but it's the letter I. I is the letter I. So here is a letter I. It's in the back. It's in the back. It's in the back. Remember, I A R O 之外，通通都是在右边。All right， 除了三母音是在当中，可是三母音都是 I A R O 在在里面。OK， yeah。嗯哼。OK， very few mistakes。Yeah。It should be on the A. Okay, if that was a, if that was meant to be on the I, I took it that it was meant to be on the A. Darren says I A. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. All right. I just mentioned that there are rules for 分词 but I'm not going to ask you to learn them. You can find them online. I put a link up yesterday or some recently. I think it was yesterday, and there are rules for it. But what you should do is, 凭你的 native speaker 的感觉分词，你认为是个词，那你就分。Okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah. That should be one word. Yes. 当然是台北。汉语拼音，我们就是拼出中文的原因。Good question. Okay. 因为台北，那是维陀马式 ，That's Way Giles. 另外一个罗马拼音方式，呃，的系统。You read about it in the pages, right? Did you read the web pages? Then you know about Wade Giles. That's where Taipei comes from. So of course we use the real pronunciation. What else? Yeah. Yes, they do that. They do that. 我不跟你们计较 but yes, they do. They capitalize names. They capitalize the first letter of the sentence. 对 What else? Yeah. I may have missed something. 不只是。Your your brain picked a synonym for 只 right? 不仅 is also a very good way to say it, but that's not what they said. That happens in your native language. That's a good proof when you read the English, right? And it says,、uh, and it says pretty, but you say beautiful, right? It's going through your filter. You just put it through your filter in your native language. We all do that. All of us do that. We memorize something, we repeat it, but then we remember the meaning much better than we remember the actual words. Okay. Anything else? How you mail? All good questions. Excellent. Oh, we finished. Wow, that's great. And it's almost shaku. You're going to get a new assignment, though.、Um, first of all, it's already on the syllabus page. You're going to do a tutorial on voicing. We're going to do the first of three tutorials on voicing and on plosives. So these are plosives, these are sounds. 跟有声无声的这个问题有三个 tutorial, and they're really well done by Mark Huckvale of University College London that I keep mentioning. So tutorial on voicing number one. In addition, web pages, phonemes and allophones, pages fourteen and fifteen. Pages fourteen and fifteen. I already played for you that lull, that funny,、um, that funny backwards reading of lull. So web pages fourteen and fifteen. In the future, you will also be doing writing Chinese and IPA, but this is already a lot of stuff, and you need to prepare for the quiz for the test. It's a test, a chapter test. So, just a why? It's a tutorial on voicing. The first tutorial. Web pages fourteen and fifteen. Work through them carefully. You have to spend time to do it well, to read it well, to absorb it well. Take notes. Take notes. And I still will be collecting your notes on Monday, even though we have a test. 
Do we have any questions? All right, that's it, and be ready for the test on Monday. We'll see you then.